Somewhere far away, hidden from the sight of everyone. Nasty people are at work Imprisoned behind a strong metal We hammer on the wall every day We try to break through No one can see us, no one can hear us Yet we are No one can see us, no one can hear us, yet we are here. <sighs> Chapter 1. An Attack at the Town This story is set in a beautiful town surrounded by high and mighty mountains. A sparkling river flowed in the valley between the high slopes, People had settled by the riverbanks at the foot of the mountains. They lived a simple life, minding their own business. But one day, an unfortunate incident destroyed their peace forever. Men and women were busy working on the fields. Children were happily playing with their friends. Suddenly, thunderous sounds of galloping horses and racing footsteps echoed all over the mountains. Within moments, a group of fierce-looking men emerged. They crossed the valley and entered the peaceful town. They swooped in like seagulls ready to pounce on fish and grabbed them in their large beaks. They were under attack. The attackers looked evil and unforgiving. Their eyes were small, but their faces were spread wide. They had unruly reddish hair that made them look even more dangerous and monstrous. Ah! The women screamed. No! The men exclaimed in shock and disbelief. The cruel intruders looted and burgled the helpless people. Anyone who tried to stop them was killed mercilessly. Who are you? Why are you doing this to us? The helpless townsfolk cried out. We are the Yajuj and we are the Majuj, the nasty men shouted in the air. With evil laughter echoing amongst the mountains, they galloped away with looted goods and crops. This was just the beginning of a series of unexpected and unannounced attacks. The town was under constant threat. Once the people woke up to a thick smell of smoke, they almost choked in their sleep. They scrambled out of their homes to see that their ripened crops had been stolen and their fields had been set on fire. The Yajuj and Majuj were two of the most barbaric and uncivilized nations and the terrible people were unstoppable. Chapter 2. Zulkarnain to the Rescue It was a magnificent sight to behold. Zulkarnain, the high and mighty king, rode regally on his majestic horse. His thick, curly hair was bound in two braids around his head. It seemed as if he was wearing a crown with two horns. Respected officials, soldiers and important people followed along. Powerful and sleek horses led caravans full of treasures one could only imagine. Such was the glory of Zulkarnain. Allah had blessed him with incredible knowledge and experience. He had travelled from the west to the east, conquering nations on the way. He was powerful, but not unfair. He was commanding, but not cruel. People loved him and knew they could rely on him for help. He was out on his extensive travels when he reached the town at the foot of the mountains. The chiefs of the town wondered in surprise. A king had stopped at their humble town and was not attacking them. They sent their wisest and bravest men to gather information. Very soon they rushed back, excitement brimming from their eyes. His name is Zulkarnain! He is a great traveller. He speaks a different language from us, but he had ways to understand what we were saying. How incredible is that? He worships one god and is known to be generous and helpful. They gushed in awe of the amazing visitor in their town. 
Unable to hold their excitement and hope, they went on to say, We must ask him to help us. What if he can save us from the evil Yajuj Majuj? They cried out in anticipation. They were desperate to be rescued from the evil Yajuj Majuj. The chiefs couldn't agree more and requested to communicate with Zulkarnain immediately. Oh, Zulkarnain, please help us. People from two nations, the Yajuj and Majuj, barge into our land and spread destruction. They steal from our homes, they kill our people, and even burn our crops. We have been living in fear and panic. Please help us, they pleaded earnestly. Will you construct a wall to stop them from coming across the valley? We will reward you. We will pay you whatever you demand. The townsfolk offered generously. But Zulkarnain was not greedy for any reward or money. He was a gracious king and a sincere servant of Allah, who was ready to help those in need. Allah has already given me all the power and blessings. I will surely help you. But I do not need any money from you, he replied graciously. Zulkarnain commanded the chiefs to gather a workforce to construct the wall. Bring me lumps of iron, he ordered. Instantly the people got busy arranging and lugging blocks of robust iron. Zulkarnain used his powerful resources to lay block over block until the entire gap between the mountains was filled up. Next, he commanded the people to light a ginormous fire and heat up the iron blocks. The workers followed the wise king's instructions obediently. Get melted copper so that I can pour it over the iron blocks. Zulkarnain gave the final orders. The iron blocks melted and mixed into the piping hot copper. A wall of incredible strength was successfully constructed. The gap between the mountains was sealed. You did it! You saved us! You did it! The people of the town cheered and celebrated in relief. This was possible due to Allah's mercy and blessing. Zulkarnain said humbly, refusing to take any credit for the remarkable achievement. Yajuj and Majuj will never be able to break through this wall. They will never be able to jump over it and harm us! They exclaimed in joy. Yajuj and Majuj cannot break through this wall, but only if Allah allows. When Allah will decide, they will escape. The time will come close to the Day of Judgment, Zulkarnain warned ominously. Chapter 3 The Persistent Digging and Hammering The Yajuj and Majuj are not ready to sit back and accept their fate. With fierce determination, they dig at the iron wall every day. Time goes on day after day. Months turn into decades, but they do not stop trying to break through the sturdy barrier. Bang go their hammers, hitting at the walls hard, until they succeed in making a tiny crack. They cheer enthusiastically at their accomplishment. We will dig all the way through tomorrow and run away, they vow sincerely. But the next day, they return to find the wall back just as it was. Allah makes it stronger than before, unbreakable. The time that Allah has promised has not yet come. So the Yajuj and Majuj get back to their task and start all over again. Chapter 4 Years Later in Mecca The streets of Mecca and Medina were abuzz with tense conversations. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had informed the people about the trials 
that would take place close to the Day of Judgment. Did you hear what the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, has said? They asked one another urgently. Prophet Muhammad has said that an opening has been made in the wall of Yajuj and Majuj. The Arabs exclaimed in fear. The one that Zulkarnain built many, many years ago? They asked, their eyes widening in shock and panic. Yes, and the opening is this big, they said, copying the action of the Prophet, peace be upon him, by making a circle with their thumb and index finger. What should we do? We must make dua and stay firm in our faith in Allah, because if evil and wickedness will be widespread, even the righteous people will not be able to save anyone, they said, urging each other to prepare for the inevitable future. Hey kids, to listen to the rest of the story, subscribe at www.luckmay.com for $10 per month and unlock more videos of this story and much more. Link given in the description below.